Well, what's up, everybody? Hope you had a good Father's Day weekend. Did something special with your dad, if it's still possible to do so. And for those of you that uh, don't have a dad anymore, well, hopefully you have some very fond memories. Today's episode is an easy one. It's brought to you by Black Rifle Coffee. It was actually filmed at the Black Rifle Coffee studio, if that's a thing. It's basically the back end of Evan's office. Uh, and maybe I'm not supposed to say that, but that's that's where we filmed it. And if you want to check out everything they have to offer, you know the deal. Go to BlackRifleCoffee.com and you can waste as much time as you could possibly have, from t-shirts to mugs to ground coffee, bean coffee, subscriptions, you name it. It's all there. It's an amazing brand founded by amazing people. Couldn't be happier to be, well, one, very fortunate to have uh, met them many years ago. Still consider them to be close friends and involved with the brand. Really appreciate it. My guests today, they really don't need any intro. They're repeat guests, and we're trying to figure out a way to do something every month. And maybe I'll find a different name for those episodes, maybe like Coffee Time with Evan and Mike, or I don't know. We'll figure it out. Um, but today, the guests are Evan Hafer, which people know as the alleged founder of Black Rifle Coffee and CEO, and Mike Glover, the founder and CEO of Fieldcraft Survival. Both repeat guests. These are some of my favorite people to sit down and talk with. So I'll shut up and let's get into it. Episode number 238 with Evan Hafer and Mike Glover. Enjoy. Okay, got the red smoke. Gun run, north and south, west of the smoke, west of the smoke. Okay, copy, west of the smoke. I'm looking at danger close now. Oh, what a minute. Do you know what this is? Yeah. Letter opener? Yep. Okay. Is this an original OSS? That's the life? original. Like original? That's the original. This wow. is the original or this that, is a replica? That is, no, that's an, an original. So that's an original. One of one? Um, that's like thousands. Thousands, but that was like, there's only the hundreds. Well, survival like knife. Piece of shit because of <clears throat> battles. Yeah, exactly. 19, <laughs> the V42, right? Um, Oh, so this one has, this is an original. Yeah. Dude, yeah. these are so rare. Devil's they Brigade, are. son. So you know who- Obviously the only person at the table who actually doesn't know what that is. Yeah, um, seals don't use knives. They don't? No. But they have their own. They had like, a, they're like I've Sog. seen them come out of the Sog. water. <laughs> yeah. Or come out of the water with like the, the shark knife or whatever. And they're that like, could have been- could have been Pirates of the Caribbean, but... <laughs> Either way, Johnny Depp or Navy SEAL. Same. I, I often get them confused. Same. He played in Navy SEALs, actually. Right. He, was, he was a B-roll He was. Yeah, yeah. Charlie, yeah, Charlie he Sheen. And, and Charlie Sheen, I would love to know the total amount of money they spent on cocaine <laughs> in their life. <laughs> More than we've all made combined. I was... What, what was it? It was the guy from Aerosmith estimated that in the 70s, he spent between six to seven million dollars on blow. Johnny? Oh no, no, no! This I've, I've leaped now into the music world. So, Are you oh. kidding me? Dead serious. The, uh, Steven Tyler, six to seven million dollars of cocaine. Maybe it was in his lifetime. I don't know if it he was looks it. healthy too. He should have been looking for a better deal. Like he should have tried yeah. to like, get it up front. You know, like a like a shipping container full yeah. of shit. The article Just wholesale. Went, the article went deep. It was like a specific supplier with a stamp on the bag. Nice and. uh he actually said, I regret doing so much cocaine because I could have been having sex with so many more women. <laughs> that was Interesting. That quote. <laughs> He's a rock star. I respect That's that. Legit. I, legit. I respect that. <laughs> I regret doing so much cocaine because I could have been having way more sex. Yeah. I, I, uh, Charlie Sheen, though, and uh, Johnny Depp. That's a lot of blow. Yeah, that's a lot of blow. Speaking of, that was a great Johnny Depp movie, by the way. The blow? trial? Yeah. Oh, blow was amazing. great. Yeah. The movie trial that was interesting in and of itself i didn't see any of it i watched the entire trial via meme i don't know about you guys <laughs> <laughs> and i only knew every, what was going on based on the them. memes that was it just like okay she shit the bed got yeah. it okay that's all i cared about in like she did that like there were no pictures though oh man because what was her defense it was our their dog which i believe was a very very small Dog, I so I had a mini mini dots and I lost it in the divorce. But I'm familiar with the size of the shits that it takes, and it looks like a caterpillar, right? That hey. in a in a heater from a human being on your side of the bed, very hard to confuse. Rare. All we needed very was rare. one picture. All we needed. <laughs> so what was and the it, case even about? She was accusing him of defam defamation, uh, or he was he was. They were, they were accusing each other. Oh, got it. What it, it was? It. Okay. Got it. It was so I, dramatic. It's so dramatic. And For I what? It was like, 
I thought it was so ridiculous. Defamation cases are so hard to try really too. Are. I mean, it's so crazy. My favorite, my favorite that I, I saw out of the entire the entire trial was the there was somebody that was putting a petition together to get her name legally changed to Amanda Turd. <laughs> and, and there was like ten thousand signatures yes! on it, and I was like. This is amazing. A this is what the internet oh. is for. The internet yes. is for these types of things. Yes. Like it is, it is meant for amusement. It's not meant for, <coughs> you know, anger. Yeah. Um, but this question I've heard. Small, small world. Do yeah. you know who sent this to me? He's Absolutely a, no idea. He's a knife guy. And Arabito. No. Uh, he and I have a, we have we have an ongoing dialogue, text back and forth about like this knife or this knife or this knife or this knife. You and Arabito do, or are you and the no, person? No, this you? and the person. But you know this person. You know him from Iraq, and you also know him because he's a Delta Force guy that Tom? likes to play Kyle Navy Lamb. Seal. Oh, Tyler, Tyler, <laughs> Tyler. <laughs> so Tyler Gray gave me this. He sent it to me. He's like, "Yo, dude, I That's found this name, for you." Way. Yeah. Um, like where is Carter. Tyler? Probably in Hollywood. He's, but he's not doing the Navy SEAL thing anymore. He is. Somebody told me. No, 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 no he's not. Really? The dog team? guy. I thought he was told the me that he's tech not. advisor. The dog guy at SIG when we went to, oh, you oh. guys were at SIG, but the, the, I was with Jack Carr and the dog guy, we were having dinner and I was like, where's Tyler? And he's like, he's doing something else. Huh. I, I was know. like, oh. I feel like it would exhaust you at some point. Dude, burned out. Yeah, for years. Yeah. It shifted yeah. to Paramount now. Oh, really? The whole show did, yeah. I've never seen an episode. I haven't either. I haven't either. Why would I possibly... Would you watch a show called Green Beret? I think the answer is no. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, I think I would. You would tune in every Thursday because you know that it would be (laughs) good. We're going to sign up on Netflix. Especially if it's done on like NBC. (laughs) Yeah. It's going to be great. It's going to be super accurate. Green Berets. (laughs) Oh, you know what? I I refuse to watch that. I'm woke a little bit, but he, the main troops, he's like the troop chief. Yep. The main character, the actor. Yeah. He wore a shirt when all this stuff was coming out and said something. It said something like kids, let kids be tr- like something with trans or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And it was like, let kids identify who they want to be. Right. And he had, he had it sitting back. He was like sitting back and wearing that shirt and took like an awkward selfie. Dude, he got, de- I didn't, I never comment on people's shit. I don't have the right. energy. But he got destroyed. Yeah, I so told much you so that based off what he you were abandoned saying. his account. He deleted every. Are you post kidding? Completely me? abandoned. That's awesome. He's got millions of followers. Right. Completely abandoned it. Deleted all of his stuff. But I'm like, dude, why are you jumping? You're playing a Navy SEAL, patriot, warrior, in a TV show. Let's use those terms loosely. Yeah, I never I connect mean- them. I don't connect. <laughs> There's no correlation between SEAL and warrior. Yeah, but I'm like, you, you're playing that role, right? And I'm like, what, what are you doing, man? Why would you ruin? <laughs> Even if you believe that at your core, keep your mouth shut about that shit. Here's what I can say. Nobody wants to hear that shit. Here's what I can say about that. I had a conversation with somebody less than a week ago, and I'll I'll be super broad about it so they don't get in trouble, but they're still active duty. And they expressed concerns about the current naval special warfare culture. It is legitimate that conversations like that. Oh, yeah. And that I don't actually know what the term wokeism uh, is. I don't either. I just made that shit up. precisely defined them, but broadly it is actually he he wanted to give a brief on what it means to be a man in a core values right. segment early on in training. He was told that he cannot give a brief because what if there is a female in the pipeline? And he looked at the person that was saying that to him and said, but there's not. <laughs> there's clearly <laughs> yeah. Not yeah. the class I'm getting ready to brief. You can go and <laughs> like speak look. to each of them. And it's and and for people who don't know this, until about a decade ago, I don't know how it was in the uh ODA world, but until about a decade ago, the SEAL pipeline was closed off to yeah. it was just changing as I got out. Right? Yeah. Same. Um and, and I think that was it was largely forced on all of the uh special operations communities because it was what did the rule used to be? It was it was a prohib- uh, no women in combat arms period. yeah direct period. in it but it was direct in combat a, correct okay yeah. so yeah. we weren't the only community but it changed I think there have been some women who have tried the pre screening pipeline to mm-hmm. date right nobody has 
Well, I saw that documentary. Demi Moore did that. Correct. Yeah, correct. That and was, she made it through easy. Yeah, she, she made it through. Me. And then Actually, they went on an op, like right well, at the end of Buds, right? Well, they pulled her out at the right? end yes. of Buds yeah. and went on a real world mish. And then somebody yeah. read her a poem and gave her a Navy Cross. Right. So it's, that was a, that was a National yeah. Geographic Sta- documentary. Standard transition from training yeah. to being a recipient of a very prestigious award. Right. Yeah. But this guy's, he's like, what do you mean? There's obviously no woman. Well, there might be. Okay, but I could change the brief if that was the case. Like, right. capable of reading the room. He, like, like, that was his line in the sand. He held that line in the sand. And they attempted to legitimately punish him because he wanted to give a brief on how to be a man to a, a group of candidates from early on in the pipeline. Yeah. Like, the most important time you could probably give it to him. Mm. He was told no. So I have concerns about the, the infiltration of that ideology into the community. He yeah. voiced concerns for the future, not only for that, but also the current combat experience in the SEAL teams. And right. I suspect this is in every branch is starting to time out. It is. Yeah, right. yeah. Which is, yeah. and I was thinking about that. I was like, wow, you're about five years away from being a really dangerous place Garrison where it's Army. all based yeah. upon things you have heard of, but have never directly right. done, which is the training pipeline that I was going through pre 9-11. We had yeah. decades of peace, of jungle warfare. And then I get over to Afghanistan and Iraq. I'm like, oh, why are swim fins on the list? <laughs> why did you ask me to bring a dive mask to Baghdad? <laughs> these don't, why are we running into every room with our hair on fire? That shit doesn't work. Mm-hmm. So it's a, uh, that t-shirt I think is a little bit endemic of the, the broader, some people might not think it's a problem. Some people might think it's a solution. I don't know either way. I think it's concerning and I'm also glad that I'm, I'm not living in that world. Well, what do you think happens if you, if you could predict the future? Cause we're on a trend it seems like we're seemingly fucking everything up. Mm. So if you look at, can I say fucking on your podcast? Yeah. It's the internet, so dude. Say whatever Whose you podcast want. is this? Yeah. This is ours. Like we're going to distribute it across Trifect. everybody. Yeah. Oh yeah. Who cares? The tripod, um, three equal legs. I like that. I like that. <laughs> um, what do you think happens? Because there's obviously a shift. There's mental health concern. Yeah. Like people, uh, active shooting, that's another topic we're talking about. But yeah. when people immediately divert to the tool, I go, dude, we're in a mental health crisis. There's uh, the highest rates of suicide amongst teenage girls. Right. Um, the reflection of comparing themselves to everything in the algorithm. Right. So what's it's, the... Bring it on in, girl. What does the yeah. next five years look like from that? I honestly, I don't know. I, I, I get like... Thanks, Jamie. Thanks, Jamie. I get like... Well, I'll, I'll rewind a little bit. I was thinking about this the other day because I was thinking about how France had essentially bailed us out during the Revolutionary War. So if it weren't for France funding their additional layers of you know, military capacity, ships, like the Revolutionary War would have gone a completely different direction. A lot of people could speculate, but truly without their military power and funding, we would have been fucked. Um, I don't know if anybody else would have backfilled it. I'm not like speculating. I'm just saying like we would have been fucked. Now, Take that from 1776, fast forward to 1941, where we were bailing them out because they couldn't defend themselves. Yeah. So we didn't exist as a country. And then we fast forward from 1776 to 1941. That's a relatively fast decline. But what I was thinking about, and, and it was in reference to somebody was talking about the um, the country of France and then how countries decline. And what they focus on is they get so comfortable in their security and they get complacent. Mm-hmm. And then they focus on arbitrary things. So France, for instance, in this circumstance, like to focus on a lot of philosophy, fashion. They went to... Uh, a, like something like a one day work week, right? I'm just exaggerating, right? And then they take like three months off in the summer. Like mm. they they lost their capacity to work, and ultimately, they 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 focused on the wrong things, and then they couldn't defend themselves. You know, 150 years later, mm. we're we're on that trajectory. We're focused on the wrong things. Like no matter what world you live in, I, I don't care who you are. An eight-year-old doesn't have the psychological capacity to define to define their gender. Like I will debate anyone mm. about that. My, I have an eight-year-old. My eight-year-old doesn't know the difference between macros and micros. She can't determine 
what is a healthy food 365 days out of the year, let alone whether or not she's going to be a man or a woman for the rest of her life. That is fucking completely insane. Mm. And statistically, it's less than 5% of the entire United States that believe in this bullshit. So why are we placating to a group of fucking crazy people that think that this is acceptable for eight-year-olds or that schools need to be injected into that narrative as well? Like, hey, dude, you're there to teach my kids how to spell elephant, not how to determine their fucking sexual preference. Like, get the fuck out of it. But I think as a society, we've become so, so rewinding. I think we've become so complacent because people are secure. They live in this false sense of security and they're always like, big brother's going to protect me and evil men like Andy, Evan, and Mike will always go out and do our bidding. And then we can always fucking flog them later for all the you know, bullshit that they did overseas. But we've entitled, I said, the warrior class, we've entitled the American public, which is our job to live in this false sense of security, which ultimately breeds complacency. It's then, it's just a slippery slope to what we focus on. The other meme, the hard times, yeah, yeah. hard yeah. men, which create easy times, which create, and I'm totally fucking sure. that up, but it, it goes back into a circle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And recently you see a lot of people circling the easy time creates weak people followed right. by the catastrophe that comes from that, which creates hard times, which creates... Mean times. Well, and it's we're hard. We're, yeah. we're all we I come from similar. People. I don't know if I'm allowed to say it creates hard men. Yeah. Well, we're, we're all similar backgrounds. Like, like I don't believe in this whole thing of like you can't be competitive. Like you know you can't teach your kids to be competitive. You can't mm. teach your kids to compete. Like we're all parents. We're all here sitting at the same table. I'm like, I want my girls to be competitive. Yeah. Like I want them to. I want my kids to lose. Yeah, not exactly. like in the uh, grand scheme, but like right. micro losses, so they avoid macro life failure. Exactly. Yeah, I had a. Uh, this is the first talk, like man to man, with my son the other day. You know, my my son's three. She has a twin of a twin right. daughter. As a parent, mm-hmm. I'm just going to say it might be a little early for those. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was the appropriate time. If your talk was about was like play doh or pulling on other people's penises, yeah. perhaps it was time for that. But like, as a, like a political or it philosophical comment, like it made I, so the I, birthplace of philosophy. <laughs> we we were we were in the kitchen and I was getting ready for uh, to take him to the daycare, and my son sits on the ground. I'm like, hey, go put on your shoes. And these kids are high. I think they're hyper intelligent. Every parent does, right? Yeah, the kids yeah. are the smartest. But they're super, uh, super sociable. They understand exactly what I'm telling them to do. I'm like, hey, go put on your shoes. And so my son sits down. And this has happened before. But he had uh, his sister's Cinderella slipper, the jelly slipper. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. I threw away the one that I found in the car because I thought, oh, I lost the other one. So I'm like, I tossed that one. And then he found that one. And he goes to put it on his foot. And I said, no, 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 no. That's, that's not your shoe. And I pulled it off. And he started right. crying. And I was like, son. This isn't your shoe. I said, do you want this shoe or your boots? And he goes, I want that shoe. I was like, okay. Do you want girl shoes or do you want boy shoes? And he goes, I want girl shoes. <laughs> and I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> and so, dude, I, cause I was, it was, this is in haste. Yeah, so then all yeah. of a sudden I go, all right, let me, let me sit down in front of him and like navigate this. So I'm like, son, okay, you like Luca. Right, and Luca's the Disney movie with the Italian like mm-hmm. oh, yeah, yeah. Navy yeah. Seals. Mm-hmm. The, the the kids come out of the water. Yeah. And they, the fuck does the, everything come back? The Navy Seals. <laughs> I think they're seals. They're actually it Navy. always comes back. They're all Navy. It's they're always, Italian it Navy always that movie back. is one hundred percent not about anything. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe that's the underlying theme. I appreciate it. But it's like, what are you guys? Yeah, about? It's senior petty chief Luca. Yeah. So, so Luca, chief petty officer, not petty chief. Yeah, whatever, petty chief, <laughs> uh, senior petty chief officer. Uh, I said, and they love Luca, but they also love Moana. I said, hey, do you like Luca, or do you like Moana? And I, and I said, do you like Luca? Like, oh yeah, like Luca, or do you like Moana? Like, yay, Moana. And he goes, I like Luca. And I was like, yeah, you like Luca? And he's like, yeah. I was like, let me go get your boots. He goes, okay. And then he throws on his boots and he was like, he stands up and he's like, Luca. And he's all proud. Right. I'm like, was that, was that life changing for him? No. But what I realized, it's like disciplining my kids. It's like disciplining a, a squad of infantry. When you're in a gunfight and they don't have any guidance, 
they flop, they flail, they shoot at hillsides. Why, what are you shooting at? I'm shooting because everybody else is shooting when you get to the root of it. You're like, no, 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 no. You don't shoot just to shoot. You shoot when you have a target. Or if you're suppressing the enemy, I could buy off on that. When you have kids, you have to give them structure because when you give them structure, their mind doesn't wander and they don't fill the gaps with assumptions. Right. Like it's the, it's the same thing I see on a flat range, right? Where a, a person who thinks they know what they're doing, but has no clue when they don't understand what to do, they do something wrong, right? They, they move the gun around. They get all deficient. They, they start moving their trigger finger. You're like, what, what are you doing right now? You just well, described me in a gunfight. Y- yes. Perfectly. I'm like, stop. I'm shoot at anything. About guy shooting at the hillside. Around. <laughs> He's like, you never shoot at a hillside. I'm sitting there like, <laughs> shoot at hillsides all the time. Why not? Those you guys are getting are it on. I want to get it on. <laughs> 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 Loud noises. Oh, shit. So I, I've noticed when my kids are given... Um, an inch, they take the mile, right? That's all but kids. They fla- but they flail. Right. But when you give them discipline, they th- my kids thrive. They yeah. love to be like, all right, what's next? Son, do this, do that. And I think a lot of parents are scared to allow their kids to live in structure because they think that's somehow taking away their freedoms. Yeah. It's like, you don't have to allow your kid to choose. How about you give them, you consolidate their choices and you give them ch- smart choices. You mm-hmm. say, hey, you could choose left or right whatever you want, A or B, but giving them the freedom of saying, you could be whatever you want to be. You could be a unicorn. You could be a, a girl as a boy. That doesn't work in, in my household. And, and I think as, an, as a society, we buy into the idea that utopia is this idea of being so free, so loose, do whatever the fuck you want. Mm. And th- that doesn't work. And, and, you know, like it's back to the um, special operations guys. The All Luca. Look, back to right. Luca, mm-hmm. Chief Petty Officer Luca. Um, when you take special operations guys and you ask them if they did uh, low vis operations, they would tell you, yeah, I do low vis ops, right? If you tell them, are you an unconventional warrior? Yeah, I'm unconventional. The reality is when you get down the root of it, they are just masters of convention, mm-hmm. right? They, they, are, they take in uh, all the mastering of all the basics and they've mastered convention, which isn't unconventional. We think irregular and unconventional is like, People think that it's just like being loose, being crazy, being a hippie. It's mm. not. It's more discipline. So we need to get more discipline, quoting like, Jocko. Discipline equals freedom. It equals freedom. Instead of this idea of like, just Does do some discipline equals do. some freedom. Yeah. So you can just not be in fucking fifth gear at 100 miles an hour all yeah, the time. Yeah, but you don't have to. Waking yeah. up at 430 is exhausting. I would never do that. I feel Jocko goes to bed at 5 p.m. He's got to. No, I've talked to him later in the <laughs> evening, like at like 8 o'clock his time. I'm like, yo, dude. Aren't you trying to get your salads? Yeah. He's just sitting there just, huh? What? <laughs> <laughs> what do you uh, think your philosophy will be as your kids get older? Um, because I think if you rate, and again, I'm not a perfect parent, but my kids are older than both of your guys. So yeah, I'm, you you have different, you have so a I'm different in, dexterity. Just, uh, yeah. My daughter just turned 14. I'm in birthday season. So she turned 14. My middle son turned 17 in uh, August. And then my oldest turns 19 in October. Crazy, yeah. man. It, mind You said bending. he got a beard, right? Yeah, yeah I call seriously. Him, I call him Osama bin Riley. He looks like a full <laughs> jihadist, just scruffy and just hair. That's awesome. Just yelling at people at first person. Just <laughs> you fucking cuck. <laughs> like, I walk by his room and I'm like, God damn it, you don't know how to fight. God, if you run into any of these people on the street, you get fucked up. Oh God. Yeah. So Osama bin Riley just turned to 19, and uh, I think I think earlier on, you can be very dogmatic and, and i present this as a question not necessarily um a way forward but i think you have to give them more flexibility and choices as they get older yes I agree. because we all I know agree. people who let's i'm going to use uh religion as an example of something that is a rigid ideology and the people that i know at a young age who were the most restricted lost their fucking minds yeah. as soon as they got out of that yep and i look at and i look at the way my parents raised me it's interesting having older kids now because I look at my oldest, my two, my two boys who, uh, did you have older siblings? I had an older sister. Yeah. We started getting along, uh, Tuesday. (laughs) (laughs) No, we're doing better, but it actually was really, it was really shitty when we were younger. Uh, for reasons that I don't know necessarily we've been able to identify yet, but it's just been back and forth. My two oldest boys think that they're James Bond and they're really not sneaky. 
and right. and their field craft is weak, C minus at yeah, best yeah. on their best day. Right. Most of the time when they're pulling some shit, I know what's going on, and I look I, and I have these conversations with my dad. And I'll be like, "Hey, did you know that when I was in high school, I was doing this, that, or then?" They're like, "Yeah, yeah." Your mom and I used to laugh about that. I'm like, "Why didn't you say anything or stop me?" They're like. You had to make your own mistakes. You had right. to make your own choices. You had to have your own consequences. So I think that's squared away. You yeah. have to find I buy into that. Yeah. But they also weren't going to let me like kill yourself. Yeah. Go make a Molotov cocktail yeah, yeah. in my neighbor's yard. Yeah. Right. Um, I mean, lighting the grass on fire by the house is fine, but like, let's not throw it over the wooden fence. Right. <laughs> the, the ability to make decisions inside of boundaries that your parents are there for, right? The soft bumpers that are there as the bowling ball is bouncing around. Hmm. I think if you don't do that, that the world at some point will put them into the wood chipper and spit them out into pieces. Oh, yeah. So I don't know the answer though, when you need to shift from the shoes, like make, mm. first off question with it. Have you ever tried on women's footwear? They're comfortable. Totally. Have you ever uh, yeah. worn like, have you guys ever worn like a nice wedge, like a nice tan <laughs> wedge, open toe? Gives you a few inches and it's makes yeah, you yeah, comfortable. Yeah, that's nice. Let me it's tell you. calves. Yeah. Get a little, little bit more bounce. Every time my wife, <laughs> every time my wife puts on heels, all uh, she does is complain about them. So like, it, 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 they, way she's like, these yeah. are the worst. Why do people wear these? No. Like, this is the fucking worst shoe ever. An open toe wedge with like a nice sundress commando style, of course, to get the breeze. Yeah. yeah. You look yeah. good. There's a couple, good. Look, there's a couple of pairs that look really good in that. I've seen, they were mm-hmm. from the Pentagon. There's a, hey, there's a few of them. I do wedge Fridays. It's not a <laughs> wedge <laughs> Fridays. It's, it's with full auto Fridays. It's also wedge, yeah, wedge Fridays. Table, yeah. Under the, you just like, so comfy. yeah, I don't know when you, there's a, there's a really good book out there. Actually, I'll recommend it. It's called Unfragile. And it's about, I haven't read it, but I've heard of it. It's, it's, quite literally about what we're talking about here. It's developing strength through creating a diverse set of complex problems that your kids constantly have to solve. Mm. And so you're, you're trying to toughen them up basically. Yeah. Yeah. And where they have to solve their own problems, they take accountability for their actions. It gives like, you the problems in the book. No, or it's just like it talking about, about a philosophy. It, yeah. Yeah. Right. So it's, like that. it's really interesting uh, you know, I tend to agree with with this. It wasn't something that I read, and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's life changing. It's like now that that's what I do, yeah, right. Because I think we've also things will get different as the girls start to get a little bit older. I understand that, but man, they you got to toughen them up. Yeah, like you got to let them like you make some mistakes. Yeah. Jiu-Jitsu, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they do. Uh, the gym I train at uh, the what would it be? They're not affiliates. They're the ecosystem is it's called uh straight blast gym and they do an inner gym competition called the gorilla cup. Cause the mascot is a large, Oh yeah. Yeah. A large mm-hmm. ape. Yeah. My coach Travis uh, has for the last few years gotten up in the opening speech. Cause it's largely kids. Right. It's hilarious to watch six and seven year olds holding onto each other's collars and just death spirals. Just, ha. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> It's like awesome. they're free falling. And then into the teens, it's just like uncontrolled. By, I could sit there and watch it all day long with popcorn. Yeah. But he opens with, let your kids lose and then don't tell them that that's okay. Don't try to round. And, you know, don't be like, oh, you're a piece of shit because you lost. It's like, you're not going to get a particip- participation trophy and that's okay. You lost and you shouldn't want to lose. But that should also be the motivation for you. To, like, don't sit there and tell you, oh, you lost. It's okay mm. to sit there and cry. Like, no. Like, this is what happens in your life. How are you going to deal with it? Yeah. And I think it's the perfect opening is, mm-hmm. you know, if you don't expose, that's another thing I don't understand about. I agree with you that I think in the world that we live in, or probably the largely the first world, that sense of security and comfort, everything should be equal. Equal or like, we don't want to elevate one group of people against another or have a first, second, and third. Somehow ranking where people finish became a bad thing. I don't understand that. I can understand in an insular world, how that makes sense. But if you do anything that touches anything outside of that country or community that you live in, you're going to get fucked up. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think China cares too much about participation trophies or any other country that may be even an adversary or just business competition to the United States. They're probably sitting back going, Oh my God, I hope that this culture just permeates even farther, even Mm -hmm. deeper because it, it fails the crucible of the real world. Yeah. When, it, it, when you look at the decline of civilizations, whether it's like what I just referenced or, you know, the Roman Empire, whatever empire we're, we're looking at, like there's a lot of different reasons, but typically you can see trends within a society 
So the Roman Empire is a really good example. They, they started taking too much territory. They were logistically too spread out. Um, they took for granted their own safety. And then they focused on a lot of like philosophical and, and abstract issues that weren't necessarily built around hardening your culture and then building uh, security. And I think like a lot of people take... Well, I know a lot of people in America take their country's security, they, they, they take it for granted. They just think like, we're never going to be at war so it doesn't really matter. And if the war happens, it's going to be overseas and it's not, it's not going to affect us. Like, but let us just take into account a couple thousand years. Like, we won't even have to go back previous to this. But humans have been killing each other for as long as humans have been around. So to live in this false reality where they think that there's never going to be a war ever again, they're fucking retarded. Mm. They're living in a complete false reality yeah. because they're not taking into account the last... Oh, 2,000 years of human development and evolution and history and societies like rise and fall. And if they get complacent and when, when, they, when they get complacent, they're allowed to ultimately be distracted by bullshit. Mm. And then that continues to kind of develop. And I think we fed ourselves this like these, they're not even complex lies. It's like you can go to college I'm going to reference this because of the the debt, the college debt uh, uh, elimination. It was like $8 billion or something like that. I can't remember exactly Why the details of it. Why do people call it elimination anyway? Because is not is it actually going to be just erased off the books or is it just going to be aggregated? To I literally have no idea. Yeah. Like, I, I have like no idea what I'm be, talking about. I bet I feel like it's not. <laughs> people use that term. Like, oh, yeah. They'll say, <laughs> forgive the debt. It's like, yeah, but aren't the taxpayers just each equally going to absorb a share of that? It's like, yeah. It's like, not like it's forgiven. But, it, but that's a good example. It's like, what fucking planet do people live on where they think they can go to college and the other people that have been working really fucking hard are going to pay their bills? While they were fucking off. Like, fuck you. <clears throat> yeah. Not only fuck you, like, fuck you. Yeah. Like, you want to go get a bullshit liberal arts degree that allows you to do nothing other than wait tables yeah. for basically the same amount of money that you would have made graduating from fucking high school. Mm-hmm. But I mean, you're going to take on sixty to a hundred thousand dollars worth of debt, and then you're going to pass that debt on to like the guys that turn wrenches for a living that went on mm-hmm. to do something else. Where yeah, they might be making more money. I mean, a long haul trucker right now makes more than like a person with a liberal arts degree waiting tables. Mm-hmm. So it's like your decisions in life and how they make them and how they affect other people. And this whole notion that if you go to a university or a college and you get a four year degree, that you're somehow fucking better than other people in the United States and somehow they need to pay your bills. Like, fuck you. This is one of the reasons why people don't like the left side because there's nobody on the right that I know of that I talk to is like, you know what? I think it's perfectly acceptable that long haul truckers have to pay the uh, student debt for, you know, the liberal arts degrees that are still waiting tables that have $100,000 worth of student debt. Mm. Like nobody fucking that I talk to thinks like that ever. Maybe I live in a like, very um, I wonder who how the people who have that debt and want it to be absolved I wonder and I don't know how this structure would exist but I wonder if we could find another group of people that somehow so let's say you had to get a go into debt to become a trucker sure I wonder how those who are saying I shouldn't have to pay this would feel about having to pay somebody else's mm-hmm. debt if the tables were flipped on them well you, I don't have an answer to that I don't either I'd be very curious to see if they were as tolerant they wouldn't be I don't, I, I don't think, think they, they would be. be. I don't think they would be. Like, yeah. what, I was reading a, some article the other day about how what we're headed for in the next three years is there, there's a significant shortage in long haul truckers. If we don't get another 20% backfilling, specifically within long haul truckers, like there's going to be a logistics crisis within the United States. And I'm thinking, okay, you know, because you see the billboards, you're like, you know, mm-hmm. Come to work for you know so and so's long haul trucking, the plaster all over about, the trucks, right fucking now. everything, right? Yeah. So we actually need those mm. as a as a society. We need that to function. Like we don't need 
some of these other things when I say like as a society, like like do I really need somebody to like bag my groceries? Mm-hmm. Not really. I can bag my own fucking groceries, but I can't I prefer to. I yeah, so do I. But I can't drive a fucking semi. Like mm-hmm. oh, that's not like, true. I can. We would all figure that shit like out. Figure it out. <laughs> that's what I was thinking as I was looking at you. I was like, yeah, truck we can figure it out. I was going to say, you just took over this for riding the Bronco. Yeah, yeah, over the top. Boom. Like, Do you have a semi here? I bet you we can get that shit started. You should have a Black five. Rifle Coffee decked out semi truck. You're right. We why should. don't you have one of those? I don't know, Mike. Like, why? Why? <laughs> It's why why are you, you, why are you making fun of me for not having the semi? At the Bronco? Did you put the Bronco in it? And then bring it to Kalispell, which is where it's going to be until yeah, you give it away. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. We can talk about the Bronco. It's uh, 1973. Well, technically ish. ish. <laughs> it's a fully custom 1973 Bronco. Yeah. 850 horse at the wheel. Um, Buffalo hide interior. So we're giving it away to coffee club subscribers. So you got to be a subscriber to win. You got to join the coffee club. You got to join the coffee club. The regular one or the ECS? You can be, it's either way. What does what, ECS stand for? Exclusive coffee subscription. Oh, I've been fucking that up on my ad reads. It's fine. I'm like, that's Evan's coffee subscription. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can do either one. I'm the guy that develops all that that's shit. That's what I said. I'm like, yeah. I'm pretty sure Evan is like mixing these beans and roasting them for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's basically. I'm glad you don't listen to the ad reads on the podcast because they're unacceptable most of the time. I, I like them. Yeah. I've, I've, I've heard, good. I've heard good. a few of them. They're really good. Yeah. I like the fact like, you my don't have. like, if you don't want coffee that tastes like it was stirred with a dick, get black rifle <laughs> coffee. <laughs> I like that. I like that too. <laughs> yeah. The coffee subscription is like, I, there's so many different reasons why I love it, but the ECS, it's my favorite. And like, you have to register your email to get it, blah, blah, blah. We don't need to turn it into a commercial. Uh, Are but you actually even open slots for it? Cause for a while you glass ceiling it out, right? Yeah. We're, we're capped. So but every month there's, you know, a couple hundred people that, that fall off. And so we typically have, Smoke. Two to three thousand emails, like ready to go for the people that want to want to get it. Um, and it's the coolest art. Like we do all that stuff in house. It's fucking rad. Like I love that. And that's what I'm drinking right now is Medusa's Madness. And <clears throat> depending on how much psilocybin the guys downstairs are taking, <laughs> is, is how much is in we'll, the coffee? We'll, we'll, like, we'll, the we'll directly, re- yeah, yeah, we'll directly reflect the right. Yeah, Derek's like. Shaking it's just micro dosing. It's totally it's my, no. That's a macro dose. You're yeah. naked, Cam. Yeah. Jesus, man. <laughs> You're taking a macro dose, boy. I, on the logistics thing, um, I just heard. Hold on, is it, we're talking about the Bronco. Let's not go down the logistics oh, rabbit hole oh, yeah. yet. Yeah. So, well, it, was, it had to do with the. the yeah, that's how we went down. It had to do with the parts. So the whole thing with this was I wanted to do the what 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 I felt was the the perfect Bronco, the perfect vehicle for a subscriber giveaway. It's not a Bronco, though. It, it is. The perfect Bronco is not what I'm saying. Is the perfect Bronco is not using anything from a Bronco because it, it would kill you. No, that's not true. It has a VIN plate. It does. <laughs> it does. It has. It has. It has a VIN number. It's an original. <laughs> yeah. Pulled off one vehicle. <laughs> and I was more curious as to how much is it going to cost me to build this, and then what I wanted to do is give it back to the subscribers because a subscription, you know, it's something I started in my garage. It means like everything to me as far as like being a subscription, uh, being a subscriber. It's like, let me give something back. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to tear this out. I'm going to make this Bronco. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Mm-hmm. And the Bronco, it got a little bit out of, out of control. It, it did. I, I capped it. Initially, I was like, I'm going to spend $200,000 on this. It's going to be epic. And then you immediately blasted through that. And then I, <laughs> and then I immediately fucking went to 300. And then I went to four. And I was like, okay, well, don't even show me the last invoice. I don't give a fuck because it's going to be given to a subscriber. And so now I've got a year before I give it away. And I mean, it is the most incredible vehicle. It came directly out of my head into the designers and then they built it. So they don't do that as a production vehicle. They custom that? Like everything on that is a one off. Shut up. Well, we both laid down and looked looked underneath, like the outside of it and the interior Mm -hmm. is fantastic. A picture underneath of all the work that went into yeah. that, the wrapping yeah. and the protection yeah. and the suspension. It's Holy crazy. Shit. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. It's a, it's, it's, it, you can race it and like, it's not going to be like, you know, a racing truck, but you can, we took it to the mountains and we've like, we put it through its 
put its paces yeah. and it's fucking gnarly. Like it is fucking it's an apocalypse gnarly. Sure. The fact that you could potentially own that for a coffee subscription. It's nuts. Yeah. I offered you five grand and you denied it. I denied it. Five thousand yeah. right. and one dollars. <laughs> yeah. It's, Fuck. it's fucking wild. But I do need a semi. You're right. We do need a semi. Yeah, like which we just need the one. Bronco could be put in and brought to Kalispell. Correct. Yeah. 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 We're gonna have a huge outdoor area. I'm just saying by the I'm, coffee shop, you could just park it right there. I'm excited. I'm excited for the coffee shop. When 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 is that ready to go? Uh fuck. I hate and hesitate to put the opening yeah. out there. Yeah. I'm gonna say November fifteenth. But really the construct- this year? Oh yeah. Yeah. Whew. There's a very good chance though. Construction will be done a month before that. Right. And we may or may not be open stress testing the systems, mm. getting everything up and running. But it's uh, it's been fast. I think I sent you the picture where they dropped yeah, the yeah. metal into the fountain. So the foundation looks fucking in, amazing. Structural steel is up. Once that goes in, it's... In the it's next 30 fast. days, it should be a completely dried in building uh, connected to the brick uh, historical building that's going to be the back of house. And like everything is going to be inside work at that point. It's going to be fucking badass. When, when are you going to do one? I, I'm waiting on you. I want to do one with, well, GDRS. I want to do one where the need is. I'm, I'm actually, I, I'd like to do a one in Dallas because we're doing a Phil Craft survival, like what we have here. The yeah, yeah. Too many already in Texas. You guys need to think outside the box. Well, Dallas, Texas, I just, because we did the geographical stuff on it. 7.6 million people in Dallas, Fort Worth. Yeah. And, and when I, uh, I went there and with a day's notice, I said, I hit up the Black Rifle in Dallas mm-hmm. and they, and they, because of Memorial Day, they didn't want to do events, which is appropriate. So I, I just put out a feeler. I said, Hey, if you got a warehouse space, hit me up. And the guys from Black Dog Traders who do, uh, Land Cruiser rebuilds. Oh, yeah. Like they're from scratch. Right. Uh, dude, Austin, uh, runs it. Uh, they gave me the building. That's and cool. I said, Hey, show up. This is 12 hours. And had 120 people show up. Shut the fuck up. On the blind on a Friday Seriously? evening. Just showed the fuck up. I'm like, Holy shit. I'm like, what is going on here? Then I started looking at the demographics. I'm like, we have to have an HQ there. Yeah, yeah. So we're doing a HQ with training. We'll do some munitions, cool. pro shop, and then a Black Rebel coffee. Small, like like Neil and Casey's in mm-hmm. Ready Gunner yeah. down in Provo. Um, their, their stuff went up fast in Spanish Yeah, Fork. yeah. I was yeah. surprised yeah. that I how fast. I forgot they were the owners yeah. of the Spanish Dude, it went up yep. so damn fast. Do Once they- you get past a certain build point, it's, it's rapid. Bro. Yeah, it's yeah, rapid. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, we're- we're building a lot. I, I've got, um, I talked to you, um, I would, what I hope, I think Don Jr. is going to do some in Florida. So nice. he'll do a couple, uh, which I visited the one in Niceville, actually. That's nice. Be there. We flew in for a jujitsu seminar yeah. in the airport. It's, it's a like, really good shop. Went, I was like, son of a bit. We went in there, didn't know anybody, spent 30 minutes with the manager, like back a house, walking mm-hmm. us through system. It was, it's, it's such a cool community. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, Hey, this is what we're Getting ready to build. He's like, oh yeah, come on back. He was Charlie us. down there or who he was, was down there? Yeah. Was, I forget uh, the managers. I have his name, uh, card in my wallet, but couldn't have been cooler. Like random yeah. dude off the street. He's like, yeah, just come on back. The thing is yeah, dude, crushing it. Shit, too. Jamie makes this. Like I'm sweating profusely right now. Jamie didn't make that coffee. Like I got she, swass going like, on like this. Like Jamie right doesn't make sweating. coffee. You just you need to back it off a notch. Yeah. yeah right. Like I'm, I mean, I, I'm sweating too because it's, it's amazing. Yeah. Like, but I like to really ramp it up throughout the day. Let's talk some serious topics. I, have, I well, want to talk a serious topic. I, I got one too. <clears throat> I'm first. Okay. Yeah. I, I got you. one too. That's true. He's have, been pulling rank on me have for the been. last 48 hours. I fucking have oh, to. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. He pulled out that he was card. a legit officer. Yeah, I was yeah. like, yeah. what the fuck? Yeah, if you guys, he's like a lieutenant or something. Yeah, right? yeah. If he's a lieutenant first to, class petty officer you, yeah. too. <laughs> Call me sir if it makes you feel better. Butter bar. Lieutenant first class petty officer chief, right? It was a... Lieutenant, <laughs> which bars. is a captain, right? It would I mean, be that's a captain. captain, in, the captain in the Navy Army. is a fucking 05. I yeah. love it when they confuse yeah. those. I know. <laughs> I was reading an article the other day. It was about you. Oh, good. How does it feel to be the most dangerous CEO? <laughs> in, oh, is that what it said? Mm-hmm. Fuck yeah, it did. I don't know if it oh. said the world or did it say the United States? The United States, I think. How I, does it feel I, to be there? I got excerpts like, or, or, or passages from it. And um, I thought it was. I thought it was funny from here on out. What is this? The yeah. lawsuit thing? Yeah, yeah. It's some kook. Like it's just like there's like some kook, and this is what they do. Like this is the thing. Like with a public company and any of these public companies, like your first year is kind of like figuring shit out. You're figuring settle. shit out, yeah. and it's like, and you always get hit with people. This is their business model. Like it's like you get hit with these things. And it's like this is their business model that. That whole thing, I'm not even going to reference who they are, but it was like, this is some fucking kook that, like, whether or not he invested or not, I'm like, we don't fucking know. Oh, well. He didn't even file the right 
paperwork. Um, but, but you have it, to respond, though, right? No, I, I mean, I'm going to have to respond I mean, to... As a company being public, mm-hmm. I would imagine that's one of the downsides because legitimate or not, it's not like you can ignore it. You have to allocate energy oh, yeah. and resources. That's got, like, that's got to be exhausting. Uh, it is and it isn't. Like, you just kind of know this is the deal. Like, you know that this is like the deal in being a public company. And like, I've heard it all, right? It's like, because uh, there's a section of the internet that loves to like, just fucking take take shots, you know? Yeah. And that's just like the internet in general, because it's like trolling is a fucking business. Yeah, it's like, boost their analytics. Like I've had analysts say- so like about trolling. <laughs> Sometimes. Trolling is, is <laughs> I mean, trust me, I, I'm, I love being a fucking troll just like anybody else. I don't do it a lot. <laughs> But I do it sometimes. It's fun. Usually on Tim Kennedy's page. Yeah, exactly. Tim's oh, his, easy books, one. his books are, by the way. Game just, yeah. Sh- Stars and Stripes. I yeah. have an excerpt where I saved him in cyber school just, just for your essay. Good. Yeah. Your windage call? Yep. My, it, I will. Yeah. His partner bailed, right? Well, his partner sucked really right. bad. And God bless his soul because he wound up getting killed later. Well, let's be honest, too. Sucked. In sniper school, your spotter can totally fuck you. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, oh yeah. yeah, dude. Yeah, he fucked him. Yeah. Ten ring. And yeah. then you walk up to your target and like, Hey, motherfucker, there's no holes in this. And you were telling me not to make an adjustment. Cause it was in the- yeah. Like, Ew, my bad. Your score is zero. Yeah. That's Fuck. what I would do if I was in sniper school with Mike. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Wow. I would. Yeah. But the windage it's competitions, call, bitch. Man. The windage call is an art form. People think they have a scientific method for that. Like that's, that's an art form. And that's where it his, is. his buddy was. Call, yeah. He didn't know how to call wind. And then me and my partner were top shot in cyber school and at the time we it's didn't know that flex. but we were doing it right. like an unnecessary yeah. flexed up it was like an unnecessary addition to the story <laughs> it, just, it just shows my efficiency <laughs> yeah. of the my, yeah. so i i called the his partner called him they failed the field shoot they had to pick two guys or they had to pick a team to replace their spotters to spot for them mm-hmm. and the incredible thing is how at the time fucked up the cadre were not all of them there's rock stars that, uh, that were there. In fact, I hired two of my cadre that are training directors for me, Sean right. Kirkwood and Kevin Owens, rock stars. But there was one guy that in particular who wanted Tim to fail. and Because I, of Tim? Because they just didn't like him. Yeah. And, and, and it was yeah. jealousy. A lot of it was like, whatever. And so I was like, listen, and at the time I was like a senior dude. And I was in the commanders and extremist force on a recce team. Right. So my job was being a sniper. And so I took this serious mm-hmm. and I'm like, and Tim was the same deal. He was in C three, seven, he was yeah. in a SIF and I was about to go down range. I said, look, um, you just told him he failed. He's got one more shot left. Yeah. And in the book, it doesn't talk this in, in detail, but I said, get the NCIC and make him come, like have him come here. And they were like, Oh shit, this dude's flexing on fucking NCIC. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Like you can kick me out of this school. Right. I, like where's the NCIC at? And at the time I was a dude named Eric from 10th group. He came in and he said, what's going, what's going on? And he was all confused. And I, I gave him the, uh, the lowdown and good on him for being an uh, NCIC, being in charge right. and, and making the right call. He said, the benefit of the doubt always goes to the student, which is the right call. Yeah. Right. You absolutely. You know, you're absolutely. Tra- it's, cyber school is yeah, a training it's a, school. It's, a training it's not an assessment yeah. school. And these guys already have shown they have the competency and aptitude to succeed. So train them. So he literally pulls out a M118, a mm-hmm. 308 round and says, he hands it to me and he goes, Mike, you have one target. If he misses, he fails sniper school. If he hits it, you pass. Then he hands it over to the cadre, who was the dickhead. And says, you have to identify as target. So the, the idea in a field shoot is unknown, unknown distances. You have a time limit or constraint for milling the target mm-hmm. and then shooting the target. They have, this is range 66. So they have ranges from a couple hundred meters out to 800 meters. And, you know, at, at 800 meters, the 300 rounds going transonic. It's starting to shift into, into being subsonic, which means it's more unstable. So it's more difficult, more inconsistent. So he goes to call the target and immediately he gives it to me and I have to walk on my shooter who's Tim and he chooses the farthest fucking target. And immediately I'm like, this is fucking dickhead. <laughs> so I look in his binos. He goes, can you see the target? Cause you have to look in his mm-hmm. binos and you go, can you identify the target? And I'm like, yeah. And I'm just stalling a little bit and I look at the target and it's a full size Ipsic or a full size e- E-type. E-type silhouette. Yeah, yeah. Not one hit on the target the whole Solid. day. I'm like, 
fuck. So we're talking about 800 meters? 800 meters, right? Why so, do you guys use meters instead of yards in the army? Because we're superior. Yeah. yeah. I'm just it, it's just, it's, Mil- it's, a, it's a more accurate yeah. unit okay. of measurement. Mill radian, not the mm-hmm. distance, becomes more accurate beyond 500 yards. Mm-hmm. If you start getting more I find minded. a laser rangefinder to be the most accurate <laughs> measurement. Yeah. Of that course, they didn't eye? issue me one of yeah. those in sniper school. I don't like school. to shoot past no, we were, 20. We were milling stuff in sniper school, too. It's like, hey, guys, I know this is the early 2000s, but yeah. if I What's hit the button on this, it tells me exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and it compensates for angle. Can Amazing. I have that? They're like, no. I'm like, fuck. So th- this <laughs> and take your Gore-Tex out. Totally so, so we're we're in a situation where we have a time limit, and Tim just failed because of his spotter. He gets down behind the gun. I look uh, through my spot and scope, and I called. I said, "Hey, Timmy, here's the target. Macro, micro. We get him on the on the target." And I said, "Listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna get you set up, and then I'm gonna call the win." It, this is pre-talk, pre-game. And he said, "Roger." I told him how I operate. He gets down behind it, and I said. Uh, let me know when you're ready. He says, ready. So that's my initiation for the wind call. Right. On the last breath of my wind call, he should be breaking that shot. Yeah. So I said, uh, he said, ready. I said, left 1.5. At the end of five, he should be breaking that shot immediately. Because right. he's, he's, he gas, has it. He does left. He shifts left, holds the 1.5 and sends it. And I hear no shot. He comes up off the gun and turns around and looks at me. He goes, are you sure? And I was like, Tim, get ready. And like, I, I was about to motherfuck him, but right, I didn't yeah, say anything. Yeah. He gets back on the gun. And in the book, he actually described it. He was taken back by it because mm-hmm. his partner before was very not confident about the call. The call to me is science. It's data. It's what I'm reading. There's no like deviation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's clear, concise communication. Right. And even if you don't know, fucking sell Fucking it. sell yeah. it. Yeah. Seven yeah. left. You're a salesman. <laughs> Seven left. Seven left. <laughs> Send it. Like, oh, you missed by left. <laughs> Maybe so he, four left. He 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 breaks it left. I said left, and I and and I. You should explain what you're talking about because yeah, you're so, talking about one and a half mil dots. Left. Yes. Yeah. So there's in, in a reticle. There's mils that is a unit of measure that translates to what the round is doing in external ballistics, where gravity is affecting it at distance. So I would call left 1.5, which is deviating based off of the wind yep. I'm seeing. And I'm analyzing the wind. It's actually a strong wind. A 1.5 right. plus is going to be a hard. And it, it might have been a 1.6. Mill dot to mill dot is what? 3.3 MOA? Yes, it's a route that. And so one and a half would be about, call it five MOA for easy math at 800 yards. You're talking inches. 40 inches left of the actual desired yeah. impact yeah. point. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot. Coriolis effect, the wind spin drifting. Mm-hmm. It's, it, there's a lot of things going on. So he breaks the shot. And when he breaks the shot, I'm reading Trace and I'm like, I, I, I could get off the glass because I already mm-hmm. know it's good. It impacts the center of the target. I see the poof. As I get off the glass, you hear the ting. Right. So I'm like trying to be a professional. Right. So I stand up and I like, I tap Tim on the shoulder. I'm like, good job. And he's like, motherfucker. He's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, his crotch yeah, yeah. and shit. And, he's and doing Tim things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he said in the thing, he wanted to break out in the MC Hammer dance. And I think he did. He doesn't realize Probably he did. did. Yeah. But he's like, yeah, fuck it. And then I just kind of faded away into the crowd. Right. Right. The entire class, the instructors were trying to get me fucking fired. I found this out later from Ricky Harris, a good buddy of mine from third group, who's one of my instructors. He's like, dude, they were after you. And, and that's the, the toxicity that's these dudes who were like, I'm like, these motherfuckers are going back to the teams that I'm on. Yeah, yeah. And they did. Some of those guys came back to the company. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck that dude. Right. That's how you get cold cocked in a bar. 100%. I saw buzz instructors were being like that. They were just dick. They were playing the character. And so I taught in second phase where like once they passed the diving test, they probably weren't going to make it yeah. into the community. You have to have a shift where there's, you respect the relationship, but you're training your peers now. Right. And if you don't have that, like, I mean, I hold a grudge still against the dickhead buds instructors that I've never seen since that day that I hope that I do. <laughs> it's like, why would you assume that nobody else is the same way? Like you're going right. to knock the fuck out at a bar by some dude you treated like shit and don't even remember because you're playing a character. Right. It's just not professional, man. No, it's no. bullshit. And uh, uh, we didn't tell you this, but uh, when um, we left you skydiving, oh yeah, which is a great time. Thank it you, was for awesome. That, by the way, yeah. it, it was, was amazing. Awesome. Like the, everything. Really that set How up, awesome is Skydive San Diego? It's and, so awesome. And Jeff, so fucking cool. Jeff, the owner, is like got waivers for his kids to start jumping at like sixteen. Jeez, They're so awesome. parachutes. He's and he's a former team guy. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. who's the dude that um is Jim Woods? The, Jim Woods. Jim is badass. Also man. former team guy. He's yeah. I forget his, his actual yeah. role, but 
Yeah, your guys' rig should be done actually very soon. I'm, I'm hyped great. about it, man. Yeah, it I think you texted me today about it. Yeah, yeah. we. So I we, have a one. I have a 190. I have a PD 190 right now. So I was jumping 190 when I was oh, there. So I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to go. That's, that's a soft landing jump. for you. <laughs> I don't want to do that. A little bit loose. It's uh, gonna be loosey goosey. <laughs> we went to. Uh, you guys went to Buds, right? We went to. We went so to the area. Team guy. So are you a seal? Uh, right. you, yeah. Yeah, I got that. We were at a uh, burrito. <laughs> Taco shop and guess and in a very seal centric area. Yeah. Between the two of us, guess who got recognized first? Mike. <laughs> Fuck yeah. He's very recognizable. It's true. I'm Asian. Yeah. I'm the only Asian in this space. I like, doing I like how you're like breaking Asian stereotypes, <laughs> like one rally race at a time, too. But he's, like, I love it. <laughs> he's fucking with me. He goes, he goes, Oh yeah, they just recognize you. They're coming over. They walk right past me. <laughs> Are you Mike Lover? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but then I turn around and it's like, hey, you realize this is Andy Stump. And then the guy goes, are you Andy Stump? And Andy's like, he said something smart. I was like, I said, sometimes. sometimes. <laughs> and the guy was like, kind of scared, like intimidated, like, oh, fuck. And then they took pictures. But there were bud students who were injured. Oh, okay. They were like, uh, right. uh, held a, back. Is, Do they look like children? Do, like, they just like children. So. Infants. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Shaved heads. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. ranger school students. Yeah. And then we, we went to his old stomping grounds and kind of, we, I'm filming, um, content for patreon now because of all the suppression that we got going on so we did bonus reels walking up and down the beach but he was talking about how he was a cadre there and all the experiences it made me think about like our experiences in camp mccall yeah but our duty stations suck ass they you blow. go to coronado san diego i would never leave that place it's yeah. beautiful there the weather was perfect the women it's amazing it's amazing yeah and we have fort bragg vietnam Vietnam is awesome. We talked about this. I think. We're like, we, <laughs> I've, ta I've sisters, talked about this. I heard they're sister cities. Like they're, it is. They're like it's Coronado and Fayetteville, <laughs> our sister cities. The city architects uh, were the same. It was God. the same sames. Like big shithole, dude. That's one of the biggest things where it's like the Navy guys get the they get the best everything. Like I they mean, get the, they're like, treated like you got to be on stars. the coast. No headgear. And they're, and they're the they only, they're the only combat. Gear. They're the only combat to... element in the fucking, yeah. like in the, the entire. The combat arms element yeah. is the SEALs. The SEALs. I mean, there's so like, EOD and the SWIC guys as well too. But yeah. I'm, I'm just kind of lum lumping everybody into that. Okay. Yeah, EOD especially saying too. That, but it's like, yeah. in Army Soft, it's like, oh, what soft unit are you in now? Because it's like, there's 10 of them. Yeah. Who fucking knows? And then there's all these other people and you're like, okay, well. Yeah. And, Everyone else, like the Marines are like, well, everybody's special in the Marine Corps. They're, you know, special. Yeah. They're all special because they're not. That's yeah. The Marine Corps philosophy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No one's special. Okay. Yeah. I think that it's, I, I think that it's, uh, it's good for wokeness to transfer into the Marine Corps. Did you see that, uh, the, the Crayola Multicolored fucking. crayons on, that. <laughs> on the it? helmet. Think, yeah, they posted it on Instagram. It was like, was it the actual Marine Corps? Yeah, it was the Marine so, Corps page. You know, uh, like a traditional, like full metal jacket, almost Vietnam era helmet, camo wrap mm. over the top. Yeah, it had crayons going down the left left side in the band, mm. the colors of the Pride flag. Well, yeah, it's during Pride. Yeah. So the here's this is a serious like a fucking problem for me. Okay, last month was Asian Pacific Islander Month. And I didn't hear shit about that. Like no, no corporations were talking well, about. No, Asian I did. Pacific I Islanders. talked shit about you. Yeah, specifically, you're being racist to me <laughs> about being Asian, and I was like, I feel. How we agreed this morning? He was Hispanic. I don't know. I'm half anymore. Mexican. Yeah, I'm half Mexican. But I, I think the whole I, I saw it coming because all the memes, yeah, the corporate culture. But the fact that it's such. Like it's seemingly such an impactful thing, and then you look at African American uh, Month, which is obviously February, and you're like, that's like legitimate. Like, give homage to great African Americans who let who have been leaders, have been innovators, mm -hmm. suppression, all that, rised up. Mm -hmm. That's a thing because that's a culture. Yeah. But if your sexual orientation, I don't care who the who you decide to sexually orient to. Nice. But that's not a culture. And people think it's a culture, but it's like, that's a sexual orientation. Being a human being and loving your children or loving your spouse, yeah. that's a human condition. That's like human stuff. Right. But we isolate it like it's a, it's a subculture. And I've seen like, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be attacked for being transphobic, but it's like the transgender um, people 
interacting with kids because they want to like, this is their way of giving back. Like, no, like, fuck no. Oh, you mean like in that drag? They show did like stuff? a drag show for elementary kids at some school. It's fucking weird. I'm like, dude, what the fuck is going on? That's weird. I don't see how that makes it through any level of scrutiny or approval process. Oh, like, That's why my kids are never going to fucking school. I just hate like, it. I'm not. I'm well, not sending them to school. Yeah, right. because like y- like you have not even high school. I, I don't or? want. I don't want. I, I seriously don't want to do it. If I had a private school or a chartered mm-hmm. school where I know the conditions, right? My 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 beef with that whole thing is. He, when I grew up in school, um, even we were poor. I mean, we, I was, we were truly, me and my dad living in poverty. He just, we didn't make, he didn't make a lot of money. We just, he sucked at the time trying to struggle. He was in the PTA meets, you know, he was involved. Yeah. yeah. He was raising his hand during meets and like getting involved. Yeah. You have none of that now. So the buy-in is like outsourcing your kid's education. Like you do security, like you do all these things. Um, I wanted to ask you about assault weapons ban. I mean, we, mm-hmm. we talked about the, the suit thing, but assault weapons ban is looking like it has traction because it's the one thing they can go, well, we can get buy-in. And I don't think they'll get buy-in of uh, restricting it because he right. already, even, even during his speech, he actually, he fucked up and he said his out, which was like, at least we get, like we, if we don't get the guns banned, then at least we could agree on the 18 to 21 rule, which is, uh, 21 year olds can buy an AR, but 18 year olds, you can't, right. Even though me and you were in the military, we were all in the military mm-hmm. very young. Yeah. But there, there's an additional level of like, uh, education and supervision. Like I, yes, I had an AR platform rifle in my hands from <clears throat> right when I first got into the teams, like 19, 20 years old, but constantly being supervised by, you know yeah. what I mean? It's not like mm-hmm. I was running around with it. Yeah. And it, and it loads up a, a different discussion. If you're going to, I have so many questions about that. First one being, what are they calling an assault weapon? Yeah. Right. That, that needs clarification as well. But why would we limit an 18 to 21 year old from purchasing that when we allow an eight year old to decide what gender they want? Exactly. To be? Like there's a cognitive dissonance there about what people have the mental capacity mm. to do. Like if you're not, if you're worried that people are not responsible enough to decide whether or not they want to purchase a firearm, which all of us have a very, I think we have to admit that we have a very unique relationship with guns because yeah. for me, and I'm, I always tell people this when I talk about guns, for me, it's like a hammer in a carpenter's belt. Mm-hmm. There's no mystique to firearms. I, I, and I'm not an expert on all firearms. I'm not an expert on legislation. I do understand how they work. I know how to work them. Barely. But you're a Navy SEAL, so you can say that you're an expert <laughs> on all of that. I used, and everybody's yeah. going to be like, I used to be. That's another one. People are yeah. like, 50 years from now, people are like, and this is Navy SEAL Andy Stump. And in my like, walker, I'll be like, I haven't been retired for quite some time now. <laughs> but why, if you're going to say you don't have the mental capacity or responsibility mm. to purchase that weapon, how can we say that, again, to go, not to make it all about that, but how do you say that a, somebody who is half that age or younger should is ready to make a decision that's going to shape the potential rest of their life. I, I it's this very, it's like an intellectual misbalancing of mm. like, it's you have to be this old to make this decision, but this one, it has no, right. like, what, are, what the fuck are we talking about? I, I don't know. I think, well, I think that there's the, you know, there, there's, there's a crisis, right? So it's a mental health crisis mm-hmm. and we're, we as a society, and I think a lot of like fathers and mothers are being terrorized by crazy people. Like this is, this is terrorism. So regardless of whether or not people want to say this is, you know, non-applicable or applicable, there's a lot of people that drive their kids to school every fucking day and they're terrified that something's going to happen. Gun owners need to take responsibility and say, this is an issue and we have to have a narrative in this in, in our country, in our society that says we still have to have the right to bear arms, but we have to communicate to the non-gun owner section of the United States in a way that is effective. Like I used 9-11 in this circumstance where it's like planes flew into the towers. We changed the way airport security was from that point forward because of an act of terrorism then we pursued terrorism internationally and we spent a mm. trillion dollars mm. protecting the homeland plus yeah. in 20 years. So, okay, we have a, a problem in the United States which is traced directly back 
to psychotics, like people that are mentally fucking ill. So what do we do about this? Because, you know, you still have to have, like, as a free society, we have to have our right to bear arms. We have to. This entire conversation about like, well, we, we, we just need to get rid of them or whatever the fuck. It's, they, not, possible. What, it's not possible. It's not possible. It's a waste so of time to even engage. You can't unring them. the bell. Yeah. The bell is fucking rung. Like, but now you can say we have a distinct reality that we live in and we are being, our children and our society are being terrorized by fucking crazy people having access to firearms. So what we have to do is we have to say, how do we catch this stuff early? And oh, by the way, oh, fucking newsflash, every one of these guys was a problem, like a significant yeah. identifiable psychological issues for years leading up, leading up to this. So it's like, this is not a surprise. Yeah, the like FBI the, was the FBI, new. They like, were on their radar. Both it's like shooters. Both. Were really? So yeah, yeah it's, like, it's like, okay, so now what we have to do is we have to catch this stuff early. Yeah. And then we have to do something about the psychological issues and then either, you know, figure out how we can put people in jail or how they can put them back into a fucking psych ward, like restrict their access. But limiting our freedoms as a free society as law abiding citizens as law abiding it only yeah. affects law abiding fucking yeah. citizens like people that break the law don't give a shit because yeah. they're still going to do it yeah but I, I think if we people looked at this more from this is terrorism and we're being we as a society are being activated by fucking crazy people. So mm -hmm. recognize as a psychological issue, then we can go to the root of the cause. Yeah. But 18 to 21, if you're fucking crazy at 18, you're going to be crazy at 21, more than likely, unless you've had help with medication and fucking counseling and a bunch of other shit. You're going to be crazy. So that, I'm like... That sick, did you see the video that I posted of the 16-year-old kid at the time in California running over the woman with a stroller? No, I think I only saw that in the, it was an article and they were talking more about that, uh, the DA yeah. and a lax it policy. Was insane. So you, do you see that? Mm -mm. God, you guys don't follow me? In no, I do. It's just I do. your like shadow band. Shit. So I can't <laughs> yeah. fucking see anybody, any of my friends. I, I can't even pull up my own account half the time. <laughs> um, this, this whack job, 16 year old kid who had been previously accused of trying to drug a girl <laughs> on a, on a, you know, a date club, whatever the hell it is. I don't know the situation, but I know he got accused of that and, and potentially charged. He drives his car, hits a young mother it, with a stroller, dry, riding down, like walking down a back road. Right. She sees him coming. This is a CCTV camera on the building. Did he know her? He didn't know her. Okay. So he randomly turns down Jesus. and he's, he targets her, drives and runs her over the stroller and her. She gets flopped up on the windshield, rolls off. Dude, this chick was like superwoman. Like she got hit. Parkour. She rolled on her knees and immediately got up and started sprinting towards the stroller and got her baby. No injuries besides scrapes and bruises. Jeez, please, man. The 16-year-old who was now 17, the DA just prosecuted him, charged him as a juvenile with simple assault. I mean, it's aggravated assault, but basically assault, right? Simple assault. It's a felony charge. He gets seven months in juvie. And then when he's 18 years old, his record becomes expunged. It's right. completely gone. So you look at the system and you look at people, 60, I, I believe the last statistic is 66% of all gun deaths that have been attributed this last year, which is the, it's always a year behind, it's mm -hmm. 2021, 60 plus percent were suicide. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, uh, 500 ish mm -hmm. of those are self defense. We're lumping in accidental deaths. We're lumping in suicides. And we have a number that scares the shit out of people. Mm -hmm. And the overwhelming majority of the active shootings that are taking place in this country is the minority overall Correct. of everything, right? Yeah. 19, 19 terrorists with box cutters mm -hmm. changed the way we do security forever in this country because of their active terrorism. But we didn't. 
take our ability to fly away. Yes. It was, okay, yeah. there, are diff- di- there are layers of security that you have to go through in order to fly. Yes. We didn't say, okay, well, let's ground the fucking birds because, yeah. you know, they're dangerous. Those planes are fucking dangerous. You it's know what like, we actually did? We armed pilots Yeah, There's a, through programs. We yeah. put air marshals on, on the birds planes. with guns. We put armored fucking doors. Yeah. So pilots could still fly the plane. I, I, was, tech- I was texting back and forth with one of my buddies. He's a principal at a school. And he was, uh, he's a principal of a school in uh, Vermont. He was like, what do you do? Right. I'm like, well, you know, these are the things that I would recommend, right? X, Y, and Z mm-hmm. This happens in your school. These are the things I would recommend. And then we were talking to the GBRS guys shortly after. And it's like, there's not a lot of people that actually know what to do. That's the other thing. There, there's just really a lack of knowledge and what to do where there should be a, sustainment training, like fire drills. Remember, we used to do fucking fire drills when I was growing up in elementary school, junior high and mm-hmm. high school. Like you'd have to constantly. do them like constantly because people were afraid of losing their kids in a fucking fire. Yeah. So I'm like, well, why are we not doing these types of drills directly related to emergency procedures? Because that's what they are. Yeah. I and mean, if you, if the first time you're doing an emergency procedure is the only time you've ever seen it, you have this fucking problem. Yeah. So I'm looking at this and I'm like, you know, you have to take away the aspects of like our right to bear arms, you know, our constitutional rights. Like these are, these are rights. And the, the solution is not, well, now let's just stop all or, you know, some ban or whatever. It's like, no man, like that's not going to prevent fucking crazy people from ha- having access. Like if you don't have somebody in our schools, and I was thinking about this, in the context of if there is a, a national security issue, we apply budget to that issue from the federal level, federal, state, local. There's only so many schools in the United States. They're actually fairly insignificant compared to the global war on terror and what we fucking spent on the global war on terror. And so having an armed guard that is like federally and state funded. Oh, by the way, when we look at police departments, they're woefully under, underfunded. Like most of them in the United States but it wouldn't be a, a complex or expensive initiative. Mm-hmm. And especially if taxes from firearms went to fund some of this, I'm pretty sure all gun owners would be like, yeah, I don't give a fuck. Like, sure, add yeah. another five bucks to my fucking sale yeah, so we can care. do that. They're not going to care. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, this goes to armed, you know, armed guards at schools and universities across the United States forever. It's just like conservation, the sale of guns go back into conservation, gun owners don't want their rights impeded. We want to continue to have access to be able to purchase guns. So if they're like, great, this goes to fund these initiatives, I think all of us would be like, great, let's do it. Let's go for it. Reasonable. 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 Not like the tax stamp for suppressors that's like a thousand dollars or whatever the fuck yeah. the government wants. Or red flag laws, man. That's, like, I, like, that's just dude, like, those are just fucking insane. Dude, when you say when you say red flag that's a red flag to me because immediately I'm like, so you're telling me that a government official who has no understanding of how this works is going to dictate that if somebody's flagged and it's very subjective, obviously, very, that they're going to determine whether or not, number one, red flags, red flag laws already exist with issues like domestic violence, correct? Right. That you get your guns taken away. If you're charged with a misdemeanor uh, or a felony that involves domestic violence, you will lose your guns. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. And so it will so, come in and take them. And no so, shit. Yeah, completely. And then you have to go through a, a whole p- a process to be able to get your stuff back. But then I see like uh, the idea that red flag laws would would mean that if you're a veteran with post traumatic stress, that you would be screened. If you screen me, I've already been screened, and I have PTSD according to the VA that's associated with TBI. Right. They said. We have TBI. We're not saying you have PTSD, but we're saying because you have TBI, you have all, do you have similar symptoms from TBI that are related to PTSD? I'm like, yeah, but it doesn't say that in the paperwork. I, I'm a contractor. I don't want you to just haphazardly put PTSD when yeah, you're yeah. telling me it's TBI related. Right. I'm like, this is how it works. You said you went to war. You said you killed bad guys. You said you saw d- a dead bodies. You said you'd lose sleep. You got PTSD. Mm-hmm. I'll take it. Give me the disability, whatever. Mm-hmm. Now, if you look in that record and then I'm screened and they go, well, Mike, how do you feel? I feel great. Well, let's talk about war. Well, you don't, you don't really want to talk about war. You don't want to ask me about war because all the things I'll tell you will scare the shit out of you. Like if I, 
the first time I said, they, they interviewed me and said, have you ever been to war? Yes. Have you ever killed people in war? Yes. Have you ever seen dead bodies? Yes. How many dead bodies have you seen? Hundreds. That's very unlikely. Um, let's, let's try to distill some of this. What do you mean it's very unlikely? Like I've, we've, as a task force, we killed 160 people in 90 days. Right. What, what do you mean you killed 160 people in 90 days? All small arms, by the way, no casts. What, what do you mean? Like I saw 160 bodies that rotation because I mostly did sensitive site exploitation on all their bodies. Right. And I stripped a butt ass naked. What? There's guys that do that? Yeah, there's guys that do that. So I, I am the enemy. I am red flagged and you're taking my guns away. It's like, what the fuck are we even talking about? How about you focus on the insane human being who needs psychological help at, in a mental health crisis? Which is a really good, it's a good segue for me to talk about myself. <laughs> is, um, <laughs> so a couple of years ago, Tulsi was one of the only Democrats yeah. that came out against, and what it was, it was, it was the ATF was going to require mm-hmm. that psychological records be pulled yes. on veterans to purchase firearms. And yes. she, this is when you were fundraising for the Democratic Party. This is, this is, <laughs> yes. So this is when I was like, yo, dude, she fucking stepped yeah. up because yeah. she blocked it. And she said, no, this is wrong. And she went to war yeah. in her own party for that. And that's why I was like, oh, this chick has stones. And that's exactly why when she ran for fucking president and all these other yeah. things, I was like, hey, dude, whatever I can do for I that. I supported her as yes, well. Yeah. absolutely. Because yeah. She went to fucking war for us. Yeah. Like, I don't need the ATF pulling into my, you know, my VA records because who the fuck, you know, bureaucrat, snuffy, right rifleman Magoo that got like washed out in second phase of, you know, basic training that went ahead to go be a, you know, special agent for the ATF that has a fucking chip on his shoulder. Oh, yeah. These that green decides berets, that, fuck these Oh, green fuck berets. these guys. <laughs> like, fuck all these guys that went to war. Or all the guys that have a fucking vendetta, which actually we know a lot of people in, I, I did at least at the agency where they had a chip on their shoulder for everybody that went to war. It's like, you guys went to war. Because they didn't. They missed the they boat. they didn't. Yeah, they missed the they boat. They either missed the boat or they were fucking pussies. Yeah. And they decided to take either, other positions within the agency that kept them nice and safe. And so what they had to do is they had to grind you into fucking moon dust because you were a threat. You represented, you represented something that directly could take away their position of authority based on experience. Hmm. And if people thought of you as a subject matter expert within a field specifically related to combat, then you had an edge that made you the enemy within a professional subculture of people. And I've seen it too on the internet. Like you've seen it probably in the last like year, it's picked up steam where there is a section of the internet that I've, I've heard this bullshit narrative from these idiots that are like, well, real patriots don't work for the government, you know, or whatever, right? Like, if, I, I'm sure you've what? heard that bullshit. Always, like yesterday. It's like, real patriots don't do this. And it's like, fuck you. Like, yeah, yeah. It's like the fiber of our, like, great country that we all, I mean, I think all of us love. It's like, when you represent it, there's no greater representation of service than jeopardizing your life, limb, or eyesight and going over and serving our country. And this entire conversation that we're having as a society, there's like sections that have professional animosity against some of us that have like what I, what I call is like carried the fucking heaviest rucksacks. Mm -hmm. And I would not put myself in that category of put other people that have carried much harder fucking like, like a long, a, a long, long list of fucking really patriotic people that have done way more than I have. But there is some definitive animosity, both professional and then within our society, between people that have done this and people that have not. It goes back to what you were talking about earlier, the sense of security. Yeah. I, what did uh, you, you say? The sense of security. Yeah. And I think it would be a fascinating conversation, even though I don't know if most would engage in it, of talking to those people who feel that way about yeah. our old job, asking them to describe and define actually what it takes to secure a nation. Yeah. Like what, what policies do you actually even know of that are in place from a... DOD perspective from a federal government perspective, like what's our foreign policy? What's the DOD's role in all of that? Do you even know what it takes to provide for you the bubble, which I'm glad that they have so I. to live in that very detached headspace where I, I don't know, emotionally and, and mentally, I can't get myself to that decision-making place that they're at. I don't think it would be possible for us based on, again, what we saw, which 
is unique. It doesn't make us special, but I have so many fascinating questions for those people. And they they seem to, and the internet's not the right medium. For yeah, absolutely not. Eventually it just becomes fuck your mother. And I'm like, well, that's super rude. Yeah. It's and really, I, yeah, it's really rude. And so now I'm just going to fuck with your Instagram page for years. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I have more questions. I, I, I'm fascinated by the headspace. I'm fascinated by what they have done in their life, what they have experienced in their life. And more often than not, when I am able to engage with them, it's very, it's like a pin prick before that ideology actually really crumbles onto itself. And then it, that's when it really just degrades to go fuck yourself well, on it, their it, side. Cause I'm, I'm like, I'll talk about it. I'm like, yeah, well, you think I'm a terrible person because I went overseas and you think I was oppressing Iraq and Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, let me tell you about my own experiences fighting mm-hmm. side by side with those people. And what they told me and how, what they felt about us being there and the things that we did. And yeah. that's the lens I have on what's yours. And it's like memes. Like, yeah. Oh, memes. Okay. And obviously I'm, I'm speaking broadly, but more often than not, their lens and the, the context that they have is super shallow. Well, I think there's, a, there's that. There, there is constantly a social media conversation that's taking place that is not sophisticated in any way, shape or form. It's all driven, to your point, it's all driven from memes. And so there's, there's a huge, and I wouldn't say it's like directly um, propaganda or direct misinformation. It's people are having fun doing what they do with memes like are memes. Fucking awesome. They're fucking rad. They're <laughs> awesome. But it's also like people have taken those and said, this is how I get my fucking news yeah, now. I got my PhD through memes. Yeah, and you're like, Dude, there's a big, sophisticated conversation underneath the, all of this. Like, don't get me wrong. I love a good meme and it's fucking, especially when they're about me and they're rad. Uh, One of the best ones I saw recently, going back to Johnny Depp, was a picture of him leaving the courthouse. And it's like, today is the day that you almost caught Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Right after they had been the verdict and he won. It's like... It's fucking memes are awesome. They're awesome. That's what the <laughs> that's what the internet is for. Yeah. Like I love it. And I think that over the last couple of years, I've seen it where there's things that take they get steam and and you're like, but that's just like blatantly false, like whatever yeah. it might be. And uh and then they just get more and more and more and more traction and they wind people up and they wind them up and they wind them up. And you're like, I have, a, I have a good example of this. I don't know if you guys actually, I, I did a podcast with a guy who was in town last weekend for uh, a jujitsu seminar, but he works in the firearm space and he reposted something that NPR posted. And this oh, is nice. how shit can yeah, yeah. control. The AR-15 is designed to blow targets apart. Its bolts travel with such velocity that they can decapitate an adult. <laughs> That's like NPR's page. With yeah. A blue check mark, which is a sign of legitimacy yeah. for a lot of people. And, <laughs> I, and, and I, on my personal social media, I actually, I avoid engaging. It's just right. like, fuck. And it, when we were doing the podcast, I was describing the comment section on his post. He made about that. It's a, it's a combination of a prison yard and a pig pen. It's just, it's horrendous. But people, there is a, a subsection of people or a foundation of people who follow NPR that take that as gospel. Oh yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. I, I've had, I've had multiple conversations with people. I like, wish an AR-15 would be capable of decapitating somebody. You know how much, yeah. I mean, like we'd be I mean, so much more effective at our job overseas. Like a, like a Beowulf 50. That might be. I've I watched mean, people take 300 yeah. Win Mag rounds yeah, to between the, neck. the eyes. At a hundred yards, and yes, it deformed their head a little bit, and there's For some sure. Jackson Pollock action going yeah. on, but it didn't decapitate them. Right. I know. I'm just trying to think about what it would take. What What is the projectile that it would take to decapitate somebody? I was yeah, thinking about fourteen five. Yeah. Azukia okay. Yeah. Yeah. Would rip or like that a forty. Off. You think a Clean. forty millimeter, like inside inside the arming range? Yes. Do you a think forty mic mic? Yeah. Yeah. Inside the arming range, it, it would lob like, the head. Right? It I might have so. some attachment left. Yeah. It'd be a little stringy. Yeah. It'd be stringy. Yeah. Like yeah this what, is, what is it? Eighteen rotate? Was it eighteen meters? Thirty three. Thirty three. Yeah. Interesting. I the only I know of a guy that that shot a dude with a forty mic mic inside the arming range. We probably the know army. the dude too. Yeah. Well, can you imagine how much that guy's would fucking Harvey? Hurt? Okay. Right. Well, it fucking put a hole in him. That's what I was say. Like, <laughs> the other guy. It he probably did the... kill him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. And uh, like he was, he was describing it to me because I was like, oh my god. You know, do you did that? We were, we were in Mosul. He's like, yeah, man, it's awesome. God, there's another guy I know. 
we we used to have the thumpers, the the Vietnam era. Yeah, the pirate guns. M79. Pirate guns, M79. Yeah. How the fuck M79. do I know this terminology? You guys are the unconventional Because you're experts. the officer. Yeah, you were doing the academics version. Yeah, of, we were doing that practical Yeah, you can saw that shit down, <laughs> saw off the, the wooden handle yeah, of an M79. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He's like, like, what are the men using out in the field? Yeah, he's like, I need to analyze all... We were actually killing guys. We had the fucking GLMs. Like, once once oh, we went we over there... No, we had the like it was a side HK, GLM. Yeah. The, the HK to also mount on the bottom of your four sixteen. Okay. It was a super, super fun little gun. I, I have a Navy SEAL who AD'd an M seventy nine on oh. a Baghdad International Airport. I tell you that story? Hmm. So the, I saw a guy do that in uh, couple, just outside yeah. of Kabul. AD the fucking it skipped one off well? the back yeah. off the off the, the the skipped it off the fucking floor of the helo and it went out the door. Oh god. <laughs> That would make me shit my pants. Here's the thing. We got to be cautious how many of these stories we tell. Because... Especially about Navy SEALs. People listening right now are going to be like, I thought these were the most highly trained, capable (laughs) motherfuckers. Because I had story after story of dudes in the back of Humvees like falling asleep and depressing the butterfly on a fucking... 50 cal and just it's at a 45 but just good gosh like yeah. 18 miles later when that thing mm. comes down somewhere. i've seen them all <laughs> i've seen the fbi hrt ad assault in the embassy dude how about the that's the, fucking the, awesome what i, I saw uh the, the the cia's director detail the one of the guys on the detail shot himself in the foot <sighs> and and uh it's just like we're i was sitting there in my room one day it's like bang i was like oh whoa i know what that is because there wasn't more. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. When it's like, bang. Yeah. And there's nothing left. It's all quiet. After that, it's all quiet. You're like, oh, I know what that is. And you like start <laughs> sniffing around. Like, around. Oh, shit. And there's one guy who's oh, not yeah. moving, who's staring. And dude was in front, like pretending, like going like. <laughs> was like looking around and there's a big fucking chip out of the, the walkway. Big fucking chip. Yeah. And, uh, and he's like trying to whistle and like look around and pretend like nothing happened. It was like. You're Yo, dude, you have a fucking hole in your foot. <laughs> but he's like, oh, I'm good. I'm just walk it off, man. <laughs> like, get go to the dock and get some ibuprofen, drink water. I don't know who. And I was like, yeah, okay. Anyway, I got to go. <laughs> so I just I like, it was fucking awesome, dude. I was not physically oh. present for this, but I heard this from multiple people. JSOC operator. Yeah. In a chow hall. Like, a, like one of the smaller chow halls early on. For whatever fucking reason, he is... Like drawing his gun, he'll drop the mag, jack around out, and dry fire. Did yeah, dry firing oh. at a in the chow hall? In the chow hall? So wow! In the chow hall, dude, he's getting his rehearsal on. Yeah, uh, it might not have been. It was. It was a. It had to have been somewhere where there was food because at the end of this, a box of pop tarts dies. But <laughs> he'd be like, pull mag out, jack it. Well, no as you can way. imagine, at some point in time, he reversed his procedure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking full extension. Go go. He did a he did Center a fucking mass. office pop. Damn, legit office pop. Much like that twelve year old who went in to rob the gas station. Have you guys seen this video? Uh, and just uh, like I think the clerk goes, "Are you serious?" He's just like, "Bam!" Yeah, I yeah, am I'm serious. serious. <laughs> I'm serious. We had one at the at the at the office yeah. when you used to train me. There was one in the little yeah. the little highest my trained, class. Yeah, highest trained my people class. on earth. JSOC Dude. operator. Dude, uh, oh, yeah. was dry firing on yeah, a yeah. pasty and put yeah. it right through the pasty. I remember that. Yeah, I remember <laughs> right through that. The trailer. It's amazing how accurate the uh, dry slash live fire round can be because you're really not expecting that recoil. You know what I mean? You can just yeah. really break it. You right can really target. break yeah. it. It's a surprise. It's a, yeah. it's a big surprise. <laughs> yeah. I had a dude in, uh, I had a dude in uh, Mosul Chow Hall and yeah. he was, the way he was clearing his M9. So he's like a, a major. Mm. He just it's emptied the entire right? mag. In the barrel? Into oh, the, the barrel. barrel. Yeah, he's just like, bang, 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 bang. Just so I can pull the trigger. Like, like, like put his ear pro in, his eye pro is just like, bang, 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 bang. Just like kept shooting it into this. He's like, like That's whoa, what whoa, whoa, what the fuck is going on? He's like, clear I'm, safe, clearing, I'm clearing and safing my fucking pistol. And I was like, this is awesome. Like, I wish I could see stuff like oh this every day. God. Whereas like, everybody's like freaking out. You know, I like, I like that so much where you see people like, oh my God, the hive is just like, and you're just like, and yes. you're just like this is awesome. This is awesome. Yes. We have to, awesome. We I have feel to be like, careful with these stories. We can't tell too we many. We already told too many. <laughs> We're committed. The M79 one was great I, because. I got one more for you guys. <laughs> what's what's this So one? this is. uh down south, like just south of Karbala and the invasion. This is a fucking good one. So 
we were getting fuel at a 101st Airborne fucking FARP. That we had a bunch of there was a bunch of guys out there, and we were in a facility, and we see, and we hear, you know, and there's like, like perimeter probes. So guys are shooting every now and again. Like it's just like normal, mm -hmm. especially like there's this kind of gunfire going on like every now and again, right? But it, you just got used to it. It's a background noise. But then you hear the saw. I hear the saw fucking fire up. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, whoa, okay, okay. So we're like getting our shit. Like, okay, man. And a very distinctly like, cyclic rate of fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, okay, and it's not stopping. So you're like, oh shit. Okay, son. That's Damn, fucking for real some. now. And then dudes are running, but they're running away, away from it, away from the gunfire. So we're running towards it. They're running away. Like, cause it's like, you know, E3 snuffy and fucking yeah. like, and we're like, what the fuck is going on? You know, like, well, I don't know, man. Like, so we we're, so dude has a runaway gun. Oh God. Private snuffy. Runaway saw. Yeah. So up. sear fucking bounces out or whatever it is. And you guys, you guys, <laughs> the trigger group probably fell out. He wow. fucking rolls out. So he's in a room. He's in a fucking little room. Like we'll call it eight by eight with other guys. He just like pops smoke. He's like, bitch, I'm out. <laughs> and, uh, it's a real hot potato situation. He's a hot potato. <laughs> he oh doesn't, my God. Like, doesn't know how to, you know, curl the rounds or whatever it is that he's doing. So he, dude, team leader comes in or like E4 comes in, takes fucking round in the, in the fucking thighs. Fucking squad leader comes in, takes a fucking round somewhere else. So that fucking saw, that runaway, every one of those guys like live by the way, but they all took rounds. There's three dudes that took rounds from a runaway gun oh going into God. the fucking, going in and to see what it was. And we were like, Jesus Christ. And I was like, I go back to the vehicles. I'm like, you guys, we got to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah. like, like this place is dangerous as fuck. <laughs> we got to go back out there into Indian country. Because it's safer out there than oh, it is God. in here. It's so safer. true. Yeah. It's so true, though. Can you imagine a saw not being held? Just like the behavior of the I had, Oh, it was I, literally. I, yeah. I, I was doing low vis in Baghdad in 06, and I had one. I had a guy behind me, and I had a runaway gun. We went through a fucking, like a big fucking pothole. Yeah. And it trimmed the fucking sear, and, it's, and it fucking started. But. I wasn't sure. I was thinking we were taking contact, like contact left, but we weren't because I saw, I started seeing the fucking, the, the panel beneath my fucking leg. <laughs> I started seeing light fucking come through it. And I was like, oh shit, this is right behind my head, son. Oh shit. Yeah, was it one of the ones on the mounts? Like a, no, was it a he had it in his fucking, like in his lap. fucking hands and his lap. Pop. And it fucking, and it started. Oh, and God. But he wasn't he just fucking held it? doing anything. He's like holding it. And then finally, the dude across from him reached over and fucking grabbed, grabbed the belt. Yeah, yeah, but it was like, I was driving and then he was in the fucking, like behind behind the driver and I saw the fucking light come, come across. But we're like, oh, okay, well, fucking dude's getting some. Like, okay, whatever. Like, this is fucking normal shit. And we're like, but that ain't, that ain't normal for the, the whole panel to be fucking exposing light Damn. beneath me. The procedure is break the links, right? It's hold it in the right direction and break the link. Yeah. yeah. You have to interrupt it sometimes. Yeah, you, just, yeah. you can just fucking pull them back and it yeah. comes off. Like, But yeah. if you don't practice that, yeah, yeah you gotta practice it. You're like, uh, what the fuck's going on? It takes you a minute to figure yeah, it like out. holding it, like stabilizing yeah, it. Yeah, just like stabilizing it in a safe area. I mean, that's a good first step. it go. That's yeah, a good exactly. first step. Yeah, yeah. Put, it, put it in a safe yeah. direction, yeah. like, but super fun. Yeah. We're at uh, an hour 30. You guys ready to call it? No. Okay, good. Never. I got to piss. You got to pee? I got to pee pee. What's yeah. that cup for? It's true. Let's just call okay. it. You guys, you want to call it? You can call it if you want yeah. to. What, what are we going to close with? Uh, well, yeah, what are oh, we going to oh, close so with? Here, so the last one we did, we were in San Diego. Mm -hmm. What are you What are you doing? I, it tonight? feels it's super right. It feels right, doesn't it? It feels like, oh, got to stab a motherfucker. Well, last time we did this, people are demanding that we do this about once a month. We got to do it once so, a month. So, we have to commit to the people who watch and listen that we are yeah. going to do this more regularly. That was a fun For episode. whatever reason, people think we know what we're talking about. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> no. I love no. these episodes. These are my favorite episodes. Me too. It yeah. feels like catching up too. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's always fun. Yeah, because you never know where it's going to go. I mean, we're ending with smoking Pop-Tarts and... Uh, Kill, killing Pop-Tarts. Yeah. 
the incompetence of special operations operators across the the, the service spectrum of I, AD. Special can mean a lot of things. I'm I always, HRT. I, I threw a CIA in there. It's I always want to do that book called Clowns in Action, and it's just these stories. Oh, dude, it's just so many. these stories. Bouncing forty Mike Mike out of helicopters. Oh, yeah. novel, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mike? Like scooping wrong dudes off the street. Oh yeah, <laughs> I've done that one before. Be a good graphic novel. <laughs> it would it be. Would be oh, right? me and him are doing <laughs> Clowns in Action. How we end it? We're actually doing a graphic novel. Are you really? Decided. Is Chris going to do it for you guys? I don't know who Chris no, is. No, I, I, he he's, have he's time. A, he's a fucking... He, you are... Yeah. Oh, man. Mike and I decided yesterday we're going to do a graphic novel service. I like it. Yeah. All fucking Stories, it. comics, we're going to go to Comic-Con. It's like Ace and Gary. <laughs> Yes. Right? <laughs> yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. But that's live action. It's an actual yeah. like, cartoon. We're going to do comic book on stories of Mac V. Sog, special operations that's guys. That's cool. But the graphic novel version of it, so it's really a little bit good. more professional. Yeah. But it tells And then the Mike's going to go to Comic-Con and sign autographs. I will. With that. But we're going to give proceeds of profits to, yeah. depending on who the story is, to the, it's like we do with Warriors Heart no. for Eagles and Angels. Fuck that. <laughs> I'm building a Bronco like that. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. That's all a lot of comments. Things. All profits and proceeds are going to go to the Bronco charity. <laughs> going to the Andy stuff right after this. <laughs> Bronco That's a lot charity. of And I promise I will drive it by uh, disabled <laughs> children and people <laughs> and wave to them as I go by. So I'll be getting <laughs> back to the mean. community. That is mean. All right. Thanks, all right. guys. All right.